Hi explorers, my name is Amanda Blown from Roseboro Travel and I'm sorry I missed you today at this Spotlight on Travel where you'll be learning about grand voyages, transatlantics, and world cruises from some of the best. Now, Tiffany Clay, my business partner, is probably sitting right over there in the back of the room or on the side of the room and at the end of this presentation she'll be more than happy to talk to you and make an appointment for you if you'd like to come in and chat with her more. But this isn't about us, even though I'm very sad that I'm missing you today. And this is the first spotlight on travel I'm not able to be at right now this year because I'm on the Mekong River. So make sure to check in and watch our Facebook page. But you are in very good hands. You're going to be talking to Karen Brooks from Sea Dream. She's going to tell you about coastline cruising, transatlantic voyages, and all sorts of amazing trips on a yacht. Remember, it's yachting, not cruising. And she'll make sure to, that you'll know the difference. The next one up that you'll be hearing from today is Andy from Oceana. So Andy from Oceana is going to help you savor the world. Andy will tell you about amenity-packed voyages and world cruises. So like I said, explorers, even though I can't be here to be with you today, I know you're in good hands. And anybody with any questions, make sure to ask Tiffany, and she'll be happy to help. Thanks, explorers. Have a great presentation. Have any of you heard from uh, about Sea Dream Yacht Club? Is that so? You guys are in for such, such a treat. Um, we're kind of like a really good kept secret. This is one of our yachts. We call them yachts because they only hold 112 passengers with just the same amount of crew. And we have two of them, they're exactly alike except for the uh, except for the artwork. And what we basically have done is taken small ships, beautiful small ships, taken out things that kind of bug people about cruising, like lines or waiting or assigned dining and that type of thing, and added back everything that's fabulous about yachting, like eating outside for all, all your meals or playing off the back of the yacht. Um, it, it, there's really quite a difference. So we'll talk about it uh, pretty quickly. And then I want to go on to, uh oh, uh oh. Turn it off, turn it off. Turn it off? On. On. On, as in on. There we go, <laughs> there we go. But we have kind of come up with a formula and this is what it takes to really feel like you're getting the vacation that you're looking at is to be able to discover, go to places where maybe nobody else has gone. There's something really kind of rich and interesting about writing rights. Uh, to be able to center yourself, not necessarily go with the, everybody else and the flow of everybody else, but this to be all about you. Absolutely to indulge, that's why we have somebody else take care of us, and to escape your normal routine. And we go to, just briefly, we go to the Caribbean, but we go to the yachting ports and not the cruise ship ports. So you're going to find ports like, um, and uh, that's Europe, um, Ile de Saint, or uh, St. Bart's Overnight, or uh, Spanish Sound, Yost Van Dyke. Uh, if you've been to the Caribbean and you think you've done it all, you really probably haven't. <laughs> uh, we also are going to Cuba in 2019. And a uh, really interesting, interesting Cuba in a bubble. Uh, and that's the way to do Cuba, is in the bubble, uh, so that you can come back to your five-star hotel, uh, but go in and see the deep, rich history that is Cuba. And this is uh, just briefly what we do. We, uh, and I like the one coming from San Fuegos back to Havana. This is seven days, and we're not doing a certain navigation because there are parts of Cuba that aren't really, there's nothing really there. This is where the gorgeous, gorgeous waters are, and then you come back, end up in Havana, and Havana we always have an overnight, so you don't have to worry about a hotel there. We do it all for you. But that's, that's an option that we have, and it's in the brochures. And here are some of the, just some of the islands that we do in the Caribbean. We um, love the Mediterranean, and if you've been to the Mediterranean, I can tell you we can show you something different. Uh, we go to places like Havar, Taramina, uh, Positano. One of my favorites is Adra. Has anyone heard of Adra? I'll tell you about it in just a minute. 
Uh, we actually even go to a place called um, Zadar in Croatia. Zadar is a really interesting place. It's a teeny tiny port that can only be reached by a yacht. But they have put all their tourism money into building a water organ. So when the tide comes in, it fills up these pipes and it plays this eerie music. When the tide goes out, it does the same thing. And they've just recently put in LED lights uh, at night. So when the tide comes in and it plays this music, you also get lights going to it. Very cool. Uh, the Corinth Canal, and I'll show you one of our itineraries that does that. That's, that's pretty tight. And you have to be fairly small in order to get there. Uh, and we do the transatlantics. The transatlantics are the best deal going, bar none. Nice 13 days of just decadence and, and singing, karaoke, dancing, drinking. That sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> Try and drink your cruise fare, baby. Um, and really, this is all about rekindling, reconnecting, recentering. It's really all about you. Uh, we have, as I mentioned, we, we can play off the back of our yacht with our water toys or you can just jump off the back and play off the back of the yacht like you would do your own private yacht. We have um, yoga and tai chi. You can take our bikes out and ride around. Um, we also have incredible dining and we have raw vegan dining. Those may not be the same in my, <laughs> in my opinion. But if you really want to eat healthily, we can do that. But if you really want to have that kind of uh, dining, we have some of the best in the industry. And we try to do our champagne and caviar splash wherever we can find in Great Beach. And this is where we uh, bring out a surfboard with all the accoutrements. This is our head chef, and he serves you champagne and caviar in the surf. This happens to be in Yost Van Dyke. Uh, but it's uh, just a kind of a fun way to do something very luxurious. We have a spa. We have a um, beautiful Thai spa, the only Thai certified spa afloat. And we own our own spa, so we're really proud of that. And uh, this is too close to dinner time, but some of the most amazing uh, food. Board Bay Magazine rated us number one in best food for all the years that they were in publication. They went out of publication, I think, about two years ago, <laughs> but always rated us the best in food. And there is nothing more appetizing than eating your food outside looking at this gorgeous backdrop. I don't care how beautiful your dining room is. To see something like uh, Portofino or Positano or Cinque Terre as your dining room wall, nothing better than that. And then you can indulge. Uh, you can do uh, dancing topside at the top of the yacht bar. You can watch your movies and concerts under the stars. This is on the back of the yacht, and the other yachts in the harbor will come and gather around the back of our uh, yacht and watch our movie with us. And I love this. Carl Hasten said, my escape is just to get on a boat and disappear on the water. And that's kind of mine, too. We also have the ability to, if you're in a fabulous port and you just think, I want to drink this up. I don't want to go down. Well, my make up a bed topside for you with the... Uh, feather mattress, the eider down quilts, the rose petals, and you can sleep outside under the, under the stars. Uh, we do have some great awards. We're, uh, for instance, the five best cruises for foodies. Uh, we've all, for years, been one of two best in boutique ships. And I am going to jump right in to a couple of itineraries. The first one we have is one of these great transatlantics. And you have a flyer on this, best deal going. What, with Sea Dream, you've got your outside cabin, it is a mini suite. You've got all your drinks, you've got all your tips, uh, you've got all your uh, entertainment, it's all included. What I like about our itineraries coming, we're fairly late in the season, we'll come from Lisbon, we'll stop in Tenerife, and then right back here when you've got a little bit of cabin fever, I'm not kidding. We will stop the yacht. We won't drop anchor because we'll never hit it down there. But we will get out some of our water toys and let you play in the middle of the Atlantic. It's the most amazing thing I've ever seen. But then this comes into Marigot, and this comes in late um, in 2018. 
So that's one uh, very, very good deal. I have the pricing on your flyer. But the one I'm very excited is a grand voyage that I want to talk about, and I'm going to do it just in pictures, a 21-day uh, grand voyage from Barcelona to Athens. And this is the first seven days of it, from uh, Barcelona to Nice. And there are some places that you're going to recognize, and then some places, and I've done every year in, um, in the Mediterranean. I'm not I've never gone to Tarragona. Has anybody gone to Tarragona? It looks fabulous. So let me show you a couple of pictures, and this will be a lot of visuals. Uh, you, you started out in Barcelona, and Barcelona is one of the most magical cities. Very, very, it's an easy place to get to. It's a really good place to do a pre-stay, and this is where we start out. But this is Tarragona, and Tarragona has a lot of the old um, ruins, the, the, I think they're, I think they're Roman ruins. Uh, but there are aqueducts and that type of thing. But in that, there's a lot of art and a lot of just kind of quirkiness, almost like Barcelona. So Tarragona is a really neat uh, place to, to kind of start yours. Then we go into Palermos, and uh, this is just beautiful beaches, beautiful uh, Mediterranean, um, kind of a, a sea town, and uh, we'll, we'll have a beach day there and just... Uh, it, it's um, kind of a pretty place to go. Then we go in, into Port Vendres, France, and uh, this is one of the kind of starting out the hill towns, and you come up here, here to some vineyards. I know there's golf nearby here. Uh, Cassis, um, one of the most magical places I've been. This is actually a vineyard that goes uh, steps down. This, this is actually the vineyard that kind of goes down to the sea. And then where you do your wine tasting is down here in the villa that's right here at the, the end of those uh, hedges that go down. Um, but uh, Cassis is just a beautiful, very quaint little fishing town. saint -Tropez, you actually hit saint twice on this. Uh, but this is kind of where the rich and the famous hang out. And we always do a chef walk in San Tropez. So our executive chef will take everybody who wants to out to go to one of the wine shops, do a wine tasting, do a cheese tasting, and that's always complimentary. Um, has anybody been to Antibes? Antibes is right along the Mediterranean, right along the Riviera, and what I love about Antibes is Antibes has a wall around it that's a pedestrian wall. So it's the best place if you want to take out and, and go biking. This is a wonderful place. Um, there are little cobblestone streets, and there is a Picasso Museum, which is the, the basically Picasso's museum, uh, the best in the world. But this is very, very scenic. And then Nice, France. We end up in Nice, France. Um, I remember going to Nice my very first time, and we had four hours to get onto land and back to the uh, uh, back to the ship. And I got maybe two blocks in, and I hated Nice, but I thought, hey, I've seen it, and I'm not really thrilled with it, and I don't think I'll ever go back. Well, I went back 20 years later and went on sea to where we had a full day, and it's one of my favorite places now because I was able to kind of eat, drink, and, and sleep it. Okay, this is the second uh, seven days of it, and this will go from Nice, and it calls on uh, Cobb, back to San Tropez, into Monte Carlo, into Corsica, both Calvin and Mono Bonificio, Porta Ercole, and then into the Civita Vecchia for Rome. So let me show you a few. Um, if you've been to Cobb, you know it's just a great little, you hear about the film festival, but there's so much more. Uh, I love that they have murals painted all over the, the buildings, and it's just really a, a neat, quaint little place, um, especially if you're not going to the, during the film festival. When you go during the film festival, it's a madhouse. Otherwise, it's just a great little touristy town. Monte Carlo, uh, believe it or not, here are all the yachts that come into the Monte Carlo Harbor. We actually can fit our yacht right over here with the rest of the yachts, and you will see private yachts that are actually bigger than ours, which is fascinating. This is um, Renier, Renier, is that, was that his name? Mm -hmm. Prince Renier? Yeah. His, uh, his castle with the guards and everything, uh, you can walk up uh, this beautiful little uh, kind of city until you, yeah, until you get up here to the, to the palace. Uh, Monte Carlo is 
until generally every night about 11, 12, 1 o'clock in the morning. So you don't want to leave early for Monte Carlo. Mm -hmm. See you. We'll see you that night. Uh, this is Calvi uh, Corsica, and this is where you're getting a lot of these fortress walled towns. Uh, this is a beautiful little island right on the north side of Corsica. And then Bonificia, I was actually stuck in a storm in Bonificia for about four days. <laughs> and what's nice about it is we were able to get right into this area where we just rode out the storm. And uh, it was a windstorm, so it was a beautiful day just really horrible seas, and uh, so we really discovered all of this, and then little teeny tiny walkways into little shops, um, and, and this, is, uh, this is a great place to go. Uh, Porta Arcol, uh, Italy is just off the coast of uh, Italy, fairly close to, um, to Civitavecchia, and then we come into Civitavecchia, where you'll spend a day in Rome. And here's Rome. How many of you have been to Rome? Everybody needs to go to Rome. There's nothing like it. Uh, but this gives you a day in Rome. Um, of course, the Trevi Fountain. You know, the Trevi Fountain, they built hundreds and hundreds of years ago and have never figured out how to place. So they were very smart back then. Then we go to Capri. And what's nice about Capri is we can fit right at the base of Capri and we go right into it. Most other uh, ships have to go to Naples and bring 2,500 of your best friends over on the ferry and experience it then. We kind of feel like we have this exclusive, uh, exclusive access to Capri and Anna Capri. Uh, Positano, absolutely my favorite place. I can honestly say this. First time I ever went to Positano, I was almost bowled over by the smell of um, lemon blossoms. And ever since then, whenever I smell lemons, it just kind of transforms me back to Positano. But everything looks like it's kind of clinging onto the, the mountain. But just coming along this whole Amalfi Coast, you get this feel of, uh, you know, they're building anywhere and it's just precariously clinging on the mountains. Amalfi, same type of feel. Very bright, colorful, we'll go right along the coastline because we're really not going that far every day. So we'll go right along the coastline and it's uh, it's just such a pretty, pretty view. Terramina, uh, we'll go here. This is actually right off uh, Sicily. And we'll go here not only for the ruins. Uh, this is Terramina. This, I was so intrigued by what's on the top of it. And there's really nothing on the top of it. They're all homes up there, but nothing. I spent so much time trying to get up there, and there's really nothing, so don't go up to the top. But look at the distance, there's Mount Etna. And Mount Etna is an active volcano. It's been a little quiet lately, but it's due, so uh, you can uh, see Mount Etna. Then we go on to uh, Delphi. Delphi is one of the premier Greek ruins. Um, very religious aspect to it, and we spend a full day so you can get into uh, Delphi. Then along the Corinth Canal, this is actually one of our yachts, and you see we don't have that much room in between the, between the, the sides of the Corinth Canal and, and uh, our yacht. But uh, it's, it's amazing. They play beautiful classical music as you just sort of uh, wade through there. Now, Adra, I told you this is one of our favorites. This is a uh, little vacation town that the very wealthy ship owners go to summer. So they're very expensive hotels and that type of thing, but the only way you can travel is by donkey. There's no motorized vehicles at all in Adra. So if you're having to go up to the monastery, you hail a donkey. And uh, so it's a, it is a, just a charming, charming um, little town that isn't accessed by big, big ships at all. So it's kind of an exclusive type of thing. And then, of course, we end up in Piraeus, where you'll, where, uh, you'll access uh, Athens. And this is, uh, that's our, what we're featuring for our grand voyage. It's once in a lifetime, but every time. And we will make it every time, once in a lifetime. And that's what I've got for you. Any questions? What time of the year?
years do you uh, usually travel? Well, we are in the Caribbean during the winter months. We're in Cuba with one of our yachts uh, in spring of 2019. And then in the summer, we'll go over to the Mediterranean and run both the yachts in the Mediterranean. So the summer you consider like May through September? Yes, yeah, so we like to get there for, uh, for uh, the Monte Carlo Grand Prix. So we, we leave basically end of April, beginning of May to get there. And then we'll come back after the hurricane season, so we don't leave until basically the end of October. Yeah, I mean, we, we don't, so. We don't, so. Um, what's your single supplement? It depends. Uh, if it's Mediterranean, it's 200%. If it's transatlantic, I think it's 25%. So it all depends. And, and you know, you talk to Freddie, you talk to anybody, and, and they can work on that for you. Okay. And do the windows open? No, you have no balconies. We have no, well, I shouldn't say that. Our rooms don't have balconies. However, we have the largest balcony afloat because your whole outer deck feels like your balcony. You're, you're eating, you're, you're sleeping, and we have more deck space per passenger than any other cruise line. So, um, so long answer, no, we don't have balconies. Short answer is, yeah, we got a heck of a balcony. <laughs> and it's the rest um, of do you uh, do you have organized short excursions? Yes, we do. Is it all just sun oriented? We have organized uh, excursions, absolutely, and they are additional; they're not included. Um, but we will have crew-led activities like the market watch, a walk once a once or twice a week. We'll have included excursions, which are going to be officer-led. Any other questions? Where you park or dock the ship, can you get off of it without the motorboat usually? We usually drop anchor and we usually tender. And the reason that we do that, and it's an advantage for us, is during the heat of the Mediterranean, we like to run our water sports during the day. So if you've had it with the crowds and you just want to come back, you can swim or you can um, do water sports off the back. So it's an advantage for us. Um, in the Mediterranean because it can get kind of crowded and warm. Yes. Do you have an itinerary in here for uh, that includes Dubrovnik? Yeah, oh yes, yes, we absolutely do. I, I didn't include it in the Grand Voyage, but we do. We have Venice down to Athens in 2019, or 2018, everything in Croatia is sold out. In 2019, we have uh, several that would include Dubrovnik. Have you done Dubrovnik? No, I've done a lot of these that you've been showing and stuff, but I haven't made it yet to Dubrovnik. Excellent. I'll show you a really good one. I'll, I'll pick out a really good one for you. So. Yeah, yeah. Any other questions? All right, I'm going to turn it over to Anthony. Uh, how formal is that? <laughs> there you go. And I will be around if you have any questions, and I will find you in Maria. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and I love the Greek islands. I've been there a few times, but it's really cool to get there. It's still nice. I think he drew twice. Yeah. 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 Y
kindergarten, I told my folks of him and the Explorer. I'm a voracious reader, and I remember reading atlases and other books. I said, I want to see those places. When I was two years and a half, the first time I ran away from home, and they found me in the next city. You just become a different person because of all this traveling and all this experience and interacting with people. Going to the markets is, wow, it's spectacular. I love the colors, the smells. The experience doesn't leave you. That's one of the things that we bring home with us every time. You can see how the world is just like a big palette, really all these cultures and flavors and smells and textures. How the people smile is even different. It's really nice. My interest in history just has gone back since my school days. I would love to travel and learn as I would travel. Everyone is the same all over the world. And just because you live in different places doesn't make you any different. When you're sharing what they love about life, what we love about our experiences and their lifestyle, it makes it all that much more special for us. Well, I usually go into a grocery store and see what the local people eat, how much it might cost. There's always something, something you learn. Always something you learn. Sometimes it's very surprising. You, know, you think one thing, you see something very, very different. The year that my husband passed away, he went to the cardiologist, and the cardiologist said, not this year, George, maybe next. Well, next year never came. I just said, that's it. I'm going to do all those things that I've always wanted to do because you don't know what tomorrow brings you. So therefore, I travel. It is like home. Starting a new adventure, but coming home. Yeah. The world really is an open book. It's it's amazing, and all of my travel stories really begin with Oceana Cruises. You just have another way of looking at the world, and I think that's one of the main reasons why I travel. I just love it. I call this video shows like every parts of the world, and it's really if you really listen to it, it's true. This is why we travel. We like to travel to explore. You know our curiosity from when we were younger, our curiosity, you know, to see, you know, all the seven wonders of the world, so forth and so on. So, who has here has heard about Oceana Cruises? Who has traveled with Oceana? Okay, very good. Who has no idea what Oceana is about? <laughs> if you don't, don't be shy. It's okay. That's that's why you're here. So, Oceana Cruises is an upper premium cruise line. What in the world is upper premium cruise line? Well, I'll explain to that here in just a second. But we like to um, we like to always differentiate us here from other cruise lines by our pillars of success, and Oceana is very different by our destinations. Okay, I gained thirty pounds um, since I took this job. So <laughs> reasons why is because we have the finest cuisine at sea. I've lost fifteen though since. Okay, uh, and then last but not least, our ships. It's really, what makes us different? So one of the things is that how, where Ocean is in the market, so we are an upper premium cruise line, so we're in between the celebrities in the highlights of the world and the region in the crystals. I like to call ourselves crystal light. Okay. So we're not, so we're not all inclusive. We're about 85% there. So all your non-alcoholic beverages, your bottled waters, even specialty dining are included. But we notice that folks by choice when it comes to alcohol and drinks, excursions, and spas. Now, you can make it inclusive if you want to, and the good folks here at Rose Girl Travel can make that happen, okay? However, most folks like to have a choice and make it a la carte if they want to. Great thing about Oceana is that also airfare is included in all of our fares. And we have airfare included from Orlando, Tampa, or Miami, okay? If you're up north, I think, I think that see the Snowbird season has ended, but if you were from up north, we also include air from New York and Boston. Okay. Now, reasons why I, I call ourselves the Goldilocks of the industry is because we're not too premium, we're not too luxury, kind of just right. We have the right price at the right time, so you still get that luxury feel when you come on board. You're just not going to pay that hefty fee. All right. So our fleet has six ships. We're very boutique. They're very boutique. Slim ladies, right? We call them ladies. 
So they're a regatta class. You probably know a little bit about them if you have cruised way before when Renaissance was <coughs> around. Okay? These were Renaissance ships that we took. We bought Renaissance and we made them Oceana ships. And then we have our two new builds, the Oceana class, Marina and Riviera. Look at the passenger count, 684 passengers to 1,250. The staff size is 400 for the regatta class and 800 for the Oceana class. It breaks down for every two of you, there's one of me on board. Okay, and that's really important. When you come on board, you feel like family. So the bartender's gonna know exactly what drink you like, okay, on the second day of the cruise. So when you come by the bar, they're ready to have your drink ready. The stateroom attendant is going to make sure that your temperature is to your liking. You're stocked with bottles of water. Your refrigerator uh, in your state will be fully stocked with your favorite soft drinks, okay? That's, that's what it's all about. That is that family feel. You don't feel like the number. You feel like you're, you belong there, okay? So our destination is the goodie part. Where do we go? Well, so I know where you where we go, but just imagine yourself where, if you have some items in your bucket list, we have it, or we will have it in future itineraries. But here's just some highlights of what, where, where do we go in the world. Shanghai. 
So when you get to Shanghai as your, as your last port of call, you can use the ship as your hotel. Okay, you come in and out as you please. We have very, very little days at sea. We're very port intensive. We had a question about tendering. We hardly tender. We always, because of the size of our ships, we always dock. And because of our size of our ships, we actually dock closer to the ports. If you're, who's been to St. Petersburg, Russia before? Okay, so you know St. Petersburg, Russia, the port is very big and very long. Sometimes you have to get a little cart that takes you to the ship. Oceana is actually right for first in line. So you don't have to take the car, it's just right there. Okay. What am I what well, I just told you, my personal favorite. Los Angeles to Honolulu. You go to uh, you go to Maui, uh, you go to Hilo, the big island, then you go to Papietta in the French Polynesian. This cruise right here does continue to New Zealand and Australia. And then we have it reverse as well, if you want to go back to Los Angeles. Did I tell you that airfare is included in our fare? Okay, so that's big. This one, look at this one here, Poppy, well it says, guys, that, that's the continuation, Poppy, I take into Sydney. Now, I know this one here, it's like, well, what's, I've heard of this cruise before, what's so unique about it? Well, you start from New York and you go to Montreal, but you really go into the interiors of Canada. Now this is fall foliage. So yes, New England does have its, its actual reputation of being great fall foliage, but if you get to this interior part right here of Canada, I'll tell you folks, it's beauty. Once you step, once you step off your balcony and see the colors of the leaves right there in front of you, you're going to see, you know, this is the best fall foliage cruise I've ever taken. It, it's, and, and it's Montreal to New York, we had reverse, but it goes to Rhode Island, it goes to Boston, Halifax, Nova Scotia, the best lobster in the world. Okay? Yes. And then Quebec and Quebec City. So all, all of these ports is, again, something that I know that most people do it on land. But when you get to the ocean, you're going to see a different aspect of the city. And then my personal favorite, I put my personal favorite in there, I'm big into South America. Now, we do have a cruise, at least from Miami, through the Panama Canal and into Lima, Peru. Okay, and then that cruise continues on from Lima to Buenos Aires, which continues from Buenos Aires into Rio de Janeiro, including the Amazon River, and then from Rio de Janeiro back to Miami. Okay, so you're gonna notice on our world cruises that it's, it's a lot of ports, but you can do it in segments if you want to. And this is actually the segments that we do with the world cruise. So if you want to do Miami to Lima, Peru, that's fantastic. We'll fly you back to, uh, from Lima after you do Machu Picchu, of course, you kind of missed that. And then from Lima all the way, now, the reason why I like this itinerary is you go from Lima, you go to Santiago de Chile, you get to visit the Chilean vineyards. That is amazing. Okay, Chilean wine, Argentinian wine is the best known secret in South America. And then you cruise the Horn into Buenos Aires, and then Buenos Aires into Rio de Janeiro. Rio de Janeiro, we also do stop in along cities, along Brazil. And then you do the Amazon River, Manaus. So really, again, really get and explore the world with Oceana. And, then I, and that's actually what I was talking about. Oh, Buenos Aires into uh, Rio de Janeiro. Look at the ports in Brazil. So, we talked about all these great itineraries. I'm just going to leave you with two others. Okay? So, I have three in my bucket list that I like to do with Oceana. I just showed you one. The second one that I like is leaving out of London, visiting Iceland and Greenland, and stops in New York. Okay? That's great. The other one, which actually, if, if, if the other one is kind of similar, but goes from, it's 2019, goes from Cape Town, and you get to go to uh, French Show, which is the South African vineyards, or Boulder Beach to see the, the African penguins, they do exist, okay? And you get to go to Dubai. Or from Dubai all the way to Rome. Okay, very unique itineraries. But let's, that's, 
that's great itineraries to do, but let's talk about cruising around the world. Okay, we have 180 day cruisers here. Africa, 
Australia, China, Asia, uh, and Caribbean next week, next Wednesday. Okay, so mark your calendar, you guys see the good folks at Roseboro Travel. So like I promised you, we, our excursions are not the excursions that we have for cruise lines. What we usually do at the Colorado Discovery Tours, we go out on our chefs, and our chefs make a great presentation here for you. When I went on my honeymoon, the chefs actually made an authentic paella and sangria in Barcelona. Okay? We also have also wellness tours. So if you're into health and wellness, we do have, for example, yoga, sunrise yoga in Monte Carlo and Tai Chi in Spain. Okay? So I just show you the variety of excursions that we have on board. Now, I took a picture of Tiffany's living room because I couldn't find a slide <laughs> what her ships look like. But this is actually what her ships look like. Again, a hint of luxury, but you're not paying that luxury price. When you go through our corridors, you're going to see our cards. You're going to see the furniture and the furnishings, but these are to make you feel like you're at home. All of our furniture on the ship and in your stateroom is decorated by Dakota Jackson or Ralph Lauren Home. Okay? Our staterooms are very large. Okay, you're talking about 282 square feet for a veranda and a 26 square foot balcony outside. Now, one thing about the um, uh, the veranda staterooms is that our veranda staterooms are 96 percent of the ship. We have very little interiors and ocean views because we want you to see the world in style. Okay, in a veranda, you gotta have a balcony if you're gonna see all these places in the world. Now, we add, in addition to that, we have a separate bathtub and shower in all of our staterooms. The only two categories that we don't have that is interior motion views. And where else we do have them. Our suites look like basically condominiums on board our cruises. We have from 440 square feet, the penthouse, up to 2,000 square feet, which is the owner suites. Some of these suites have their own gyms. Some of these suites have their own movie theaters, dining rooms, hot tubs outside their, uh, their verandas. You can entertain a party if you want to. That's our suite. Like I said, your own condominium on board our cruises. We do have entertainment on board. We have Las Vegas style shows and Broadway musicals. We do have casinos on board. We also have a pool that you do not have to fight for a pool chair, okay? We also have um, daily gatherings, social, a social hour, happy hour, two for one every single night. Ladies and gentlemen, you have to try the O Martini. But I warn you, if you have two or three, the name changes to the O No, the O Y, the O Not Again, the O I Need to Go to Bed. Okay? <laughs> two for one happy hour, this will be an afternoon tea as well on board every single day at 4 p.m. Okay, that's 4 p.m. ship's time. We have spas on board. Canyon Ranch is our spa provider. And we have complimentary yoga classes, Pilates, um, fitness classes, just in case if you have a regimen going, you want you to lose your steps. When I go on vacation, though, I just usually forget that. But <laughs> we have it on board just in case. Now, my favorite part of our presentation is this one, the finest cuisine in sea. Look at this great brochure. How about this great souffle? The reasons why we are the finest cuisine at sea is because of our ingredients and because of this man, which we were giving out a Jacques Dupin cookbook. Okay? Now, Jacques is, if you don't know who he is, where have you been? No, I'm just kidding. Um, he's actually, he was the head, um, the head chef for Charles de Gaulle. Okay? Which is, was a very great president of France. That's why they named the airport after him. Okay? Now, he also cooked with Julia Chavez, and he came to Oceania and we opened our doors. So he is the mastermind of our culinary. When we built Marina and Riviera, they were kind of shocked that we were building the kitchens first. And they asked, the shipyard asked Frank Del Rio, the owner at the time, saying, what are you doing? Why are you making these kitchens? I thought we were building the ship. Jacques interjected and says, I'm building my kitchens. It just so happens there's going to be rooms around my kitchens. Okay? Our galleys, we have galleys in every single one of our restaurants. Okay? And we have the freshest ingredients there is. The reason being is that when the ship docks, our chefs go out and pick local produce, seafood, and, um, and meats when they go into the ports of call. 
Not only that, we also import lobster from Nova Scotia. We also bring French butter and the pancho flour from France. So we make baguettes and croissants every day. We make them fresh. Our croissants, I would say, have two bars of chocolate in it. Okay? We have USDA dry, uh, dry aged beef in our restaurants, and we make our own pastas every single day. Okay? Everything is made fresh, made to order. And we also recruit all of our, uh, our chefs, uh, five star chefs from all over the world. Okay? Of course, with Jacques at the helm. At our restaurants, you have variety. You have vegan meals, vegetarian meals, gluten free. We even started doing kosher now. Um, we have steakhouses, Mediterranean restaurants. We have Jacques' own restaurant there, Asian fusion, you name it. In our casual dining room, not the B word, I hate that B word. We don't use the B word in Oceana. You know what the B word is? B U F F E T. Okay, we don't use that. That's, that's, no. Um, we don't, so when we go to casual uh, restaurants, it, we do have different stations with different types of cuisines. My personal favorite, folks, is there is every day, every night, there is lobster tail and grilled steak. Mm -hmm. If you want, that's complimentary. All of our specialty dining rooms are complimentary. It is country club casual, by the way, so you can leave your suits and all the evening wear, uh, formal wear at home. You don't need them. There is a open, there is a 6 p.m. dining, 8 p.m. dining, open dining. You just come as you please. For our specialty dining rooms, we do require reservations because since it's free, everybody wants to go in. And you can imagine everybody wants to go in in mass chaos. So we do have reservations, okay? For the specialty dining rooms. All life choices are promotion going on right now, as I mentioned. Um, airfare from 26 gateways, Orlando is one, Tampa, and Miami here in Florida. Unlimited internet for one device in the stateroom, and your choice of either shore excursions, ship club, shore excursions, or beverage package, or the equivalent shipboard credit. Okay? Folks, the more days you go, the more you're going to get. That's basically what it boils down to. Okay? I'm not going to go into too detailed because I'd rather have the folks at Rose Road Travel tell you all about it uh, and, and our special offers as they also have uh, selected dates that can give you free prepaid gratuities. Okay? All along with the promotion here. Now, before I end, just with some brochures you want to take. You want to take this one in particular. It's the most, if, if you leave with just anything, leave with this one. Because this tells you all of our sailings in a nutshell. Okay? So these are all of the sailings that we have for 2018 and the back 2019. And then coming soon is going to be 2020. We have specific itineraries, um, kind of little handouts. So if you're interested in transatlantic cruises, we do have transatlantic cruises from Miami to Rome, Miami to Barcelona, even Miami, uh, New York to London, uh, and then Asia and Africa here. And we do have some others. And again, we just brought you some for you to take home because we want you to carry a whole load, but definitely make an appointment with your Rose Road Travel agent, and they can tell you every, every detail to the last thing from A to Z about our itineraries. I will tell you this, and, and uh, last I close, Folks, I will tell you that Rose Pearl Travel, we are giving all the promotions. We're giving them everything, okay? We're not doing a standard offer today because everybody might have a unique situation. As far as some, some folks want to book around the world, some folks may want to book a 20 or 30 day. But for if you are here today, if you book a Rose Pearl Travel within two weeks, we will give you a special offer. And it will depend on the days that you're going to go on a cruise, okay? We're giving them exclusive offers that we don't offer direct guests. All right, so the best recommendation is to talk to them. They will tell you the pricing, they will tell you what the special offer is, and remember that we give, we're giving them free prepaid gratuities on selected days and give that to you, okay? And with that, thank you very much. I think you got my clicker here. Thank you very much for your time, and I will go ahead and open up to any questions. What's your single supplement? So we do, the single supplement is 200%. However, we do have some dates that is 150. If you have a unique situation or a unique saline you like, 
talk to you, the travel agent, our most world travel, they will talk to me to see if we can get you 150%. But normally it's 200%. And for you, your first like, breakfast and lunches, you would go to the dining room? Anywhere you want to. You get, uh, for breakfast, when I went on Oceana for breakfast, I went to that casual dining room that I was talking about. Because if you see it, it's kind of the, the best view of the world. When we were docked in Monte Carlo, it was amazing. I grew, we had breakfast in Monte Carlo at Centro Pez because we had a late excursion, and it was just, our just was dropped. And we had actually a very good Mediterranean omelet. Any other questions? That's how I get my 30 pounds. <laughs> All right, well, thank you very much, folks, for your time. I'll hang around here for a little bit in case you have any questions, okay?